Yo, what's good? Before I start the video, you know how to do another little shameless plug. Uh, make sure to join the Discord. Sometimes y'all can help and be in videos. Subscribing and joining is a good way to support the channel because these videos be taking hella long to make. But yeah, let's get to the video. Man, I gotta say right now, if it wasn't already obvious on this channel, I love a good sad song. And I love a good artist that can combine emotion and vibes while also keeping a deeper meaning towards the art. I know that shit sounded stupid to some of y'all, so I'm gonna put it in terms for all my slow motherfuckers. I like music that's good and gets me moving my body around. And you know, there's a lot of artists people can choose from to give you this satisfaction. But one artist who I've mentioned countless times on this channel that I just cannot get is Frank Ocean. This dude's music is exactly what I'm looking for when I'm in all types of moods because he can really satisfy anyone with his music. Feeling sad and depressed? Blonde got you, bro. Feeling like you ain't yourself lately? This nine minute masterpiece got you. This dude honestly no joke when it comes to making music. And even outside of that, I mean he straight up knocked Chris Brown's bodyguard with a couple of punches. Hey, he might be bi, but that don't mean he a pussy. But anyways, Frank Ocean is definitely one of my favorite artists and he allowed me to expand my music into other areas and I'm thankful for that. But goddamn, we're just not gonna leave out the elephant in the room and disregard the fact that there's definitely issues on Frank's end. I've already mentioned a lot of the problems I have with Frank Ocean in my last video about him, so if you want to watch that, I linked it in the description. But chances are, if you're a Frank Ocean fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We're going to flash back to the Coachella performance last year that ultimately ended up being a disaster. I said this before, but finessing Def Jam is one thing, but finessing your diehard fans who paid thousands to watch, now that's pretty bad. Now all line during this time, the hype leading up to this performance was insane. People thought he was going to announce a new album, and there was a whole conspiracy about Nostalgia Ultra dropping on streaming due to someone saying Frank's team contacted them to get the car on the cover. And well, you could probably guess what happened. Absolutely fucking nothing. But what did happen is Frank showing up two hours late, only performing a few songs, giving a heartfelt speech to his brother, then dropping out of Coachella because his ankle hurt or something. The main reason why there was so much hype and expectations around this performance is because Frank hadn't done a live performance in 6 years. It seems like the only thing Frank Ocean does nowadays is nothing. Only posting the occasional Instagram story, or even better, a new concrete drop. Which leads his fans to wonder, where the fuck is Frank Ocean? And you know, that's what me and my boy Spatial are going to be answering today. But yeah, Frank Ocean is like the weird uncle you see at family gatherings. You see him once a year so he can molest you? yet you still keep coming back waiting for more. You know, that might have been a weird correlation, but you get what I mean. Frank doesn't treat his fans as well as he once did. I mean, no artist is obligated to release music for their fans just because we said so, but I mean, eight years without an album, kind of crazy though. Like, you know it's bad when the king of capping himself, Playboy Cardi, tells you to drop just a little snippet. Now, Frank Ocean, when it comes to releasing music these past years, well, it's been relatively quiet, but that doesn't mean there's not some info. Since Blonde, Frank has released 10 singles. The first six singles released between 2017 and 2018, Chanel, Biking, Lens, Biking Solo, Provider, and Moon River were seen as Blonde leftovers or singles, but the next and more interesting singles released between 2019 and 2020 suggested that they were for an upcoming album of his. So yeah, it's as dry as your dead grandma's- mm, Never mind, bruh. I go finish that joke. I'm trying to be able to pay rent this month, bro. Not trying to upset this motherfucker right here. Hey, side note, whatever happened to Susan though? It just don't be hitting the same to make demonetization jokes without her name, bruh. But hey, I'm going off topic. It's as dry as the Sahara Desert up in this bitch. It's crazy to think that during this eight year span, Frank actually got off his lazy ass and started being creative. I don't know if y'all remember the singles from 2019 to 2020, but yeah, turns out those singles were for an upcoming album that was supposedly titled Look At Us, We're In Love and it was supposed to be inspired by the sounds of techno and house music made for the club and the nightlife. The first single on streaming that was meant for this album was DHL, released on October 19th, 2019. Then a month later on November 2nd, In My Room was released. The concept of this album is that Frank would make it be composed entirely of singles, letting the listener create a playlist with those songs, but they would all drop on the same day like a regular album. His reasoning for this at the time was because he believed albums were outdated. Now honestly, I don't really know how this would have gone down for Frank Ocean fans. Yeah, it's the same amount of music, but like most people like listening to an album that feels like a cohesive piece that can give off an experience. That's why Blonde did so good. But we never got this project finished, so who gives a shit? Yeah, I'm a little irritated. Drop the motherfucking album, Frank. But uh, moving on, before these two singles were released, Frank Ocean held an event at his nightclub, Prep Plus, on October 17th, 
2019, which premiered two of the other other singles for this album, Dear April and Cayendo, which were officially released on vinyl on October 19, 2019, then later on streaming on April 3rd, 2020. Another thing to mention that I bet some of y'all didn't know is that another track previewed at Prep Plus titled Little Demon featuring Skepta was available for purchase on Blonded.co on November 3rd, 2019. However, due to the outbreak of COVID-19, Blonded postponed the vinyl's release in February 2020, providing customers the option to cancel the order or substitute their purchase with another 7-inch single these days. The song was pressed on vinyl like Little Demon and sent out to less than 10 customers. With the rapid development of COVID-19, Blonde decided to scrap the release of these days as well, and the few customers who already received the vinyl were contacted by Blonde, who traded the customers a copy of their remaining stock of endless vinyl for the return of the 7-inch vinyl. Subsequently, the song was never ripped and leaked from the pressing, but uh yeah, you know how Frank Ocean fans are. They eventually get their little dirty hands on any leaks due to how desperate they are, because they ended up getting leaks from a group buy in 2023. As of official releases from Frank, everything I said is about it. Like I said, drier than the Sahara Desert, bro. Now I know some of y'all on some creepy shit and you wanna know where he been outside of music. And you know what? I'm low-key creepy too sometimes. So I'ma just tell y'all, as of right now, the total sightings that I've counted up for Frank Ocean since Coachella are three. Yeah, that's expected. I don't know if bro leaves his house a lot, but I wouldn't either after pissing off the music community. Oh God, I don't know why I spent time researching this BS, bruh. But I know it's not like I'm not the only one doing this shit. I got all this info from people posting videos of Frank on Reddit, bruh. They the real stalkers. This comment just about sums up the Frank Ocean subreddit for you. But yeah, bros been spotted in like Tokyo and like Amsterdam or something. But the one post I found that caught my eye was this one. Where someone claims that one of their friends served Frank Ocean in New York and that he only tipped him 6%. I don't know how accurate this is. I guess that explains why he be posting quick cash grab merch on his story. Because this motherfucker must be broke as hell. Like homie is fully capable of giving at least 15%. Bro, we all need to buy more cock rings for real. Because how do we let bro get away with giving a server some chump change? But uh, yeah, anyways, we are gonna keep moving forward. And what better person to analyze such an artist than my boy Spatial? I knew he would be perfect for this video because I'ma be honest, he on a whole nother level when it comes to this shit. And he can expand on topics like this beyond my capabilities. But uh, yeah, take this shit away, Spatial. Where the fuck is Frank Ocean? Well, to answer this, we need to first understand who Frank Ocean is, or arguably more important, what Frank Ocean is. Frank Ocean is an artist, like a true artist. He's someone who values authenticity and takes time to create meaningful work. He constantly blends genres, unapologetically explores deep and taboo themes, and crafts music that's so relatable when he sings about being in an estranged gay relationship, or a prostitute who's fallen out of love for a true lover for a pimp, or even the son of an ultra-rich billionaire. His music still resonates deeply on an emotional and personal level with hundreds of thousands of people whose lives are nothing like these stories. He can do this, yes, because he's an amazing writer and yes, because he has a great ability to evoke emotion through music, but so do other artists. What sets Frank apart from the rest is his ability to prioritize patience and artistic integrity over commercial success, allowing his personal experiences to shape his unique sound. And he's been doing this successfully since his breakout mixtape nostalgia ultra. Frank Ocean's patience in the creative process has always resulted in profound and enduring art that inspires both listeners and fellow musicians, and is done not for a pursuit of riches, but in pursuit of an artistic lifestyle, a certain freedom that very few have been able to achieve when the temptation of a big check is waiting for you at any given moment. And I was like, Frank, how do you do it, man? You never do any press, you barely tour, and you only put out your music when you really want to. What's the secret? And he said, oh, man. Man, you just gotta be comfortable making less money, that's all. And I was like, oh shit. Make less money, you say? Never thought about that. Frank Ocean has always had a commitment to his craft as a musician, from sharpening his songwriting skills, ghostwriting for Beyonce and John Legend in the beginning of his career, to patiently waiting and devising a plan to finesse Def Jam out of his contract so he could independently release his album Blonde 
on his own terms as his own artist. It's also pretty clear that Frank prioritizes authenticity over commercial success when you recall songs like Not Just Money, Sweet Life, and Super Rich Kids off of his album Channel Orange, all of which can be interpreted as warnings of the evil that often accompanies money. When really listening to the lyrics of these songs, it's clear that Frank Ocean has a pretty well-rounded view on the subject. In 2020, four years after the release of Blonde, there were whispers of a new Frank Ocean album on the horizon. The reason being, the handful of singles released that year included a clue to a connection between all of the tracks. The matching silhouettes at the bottom of each of the singles cover art led many to believe that these songs were part of a larger project Frank was working on, popularizing the theory called the single model theory, where Frank would release an entire album as singles. And most likely this theory for new music was accurate. For one, releasing an album as singles is honestly as Frank Ocean as it gets, but also Frank was set to perform at Coachella that same year where he would be able to perform his new music as artists often did. Fans were excited, myself included, and many waited patiently for more information on a new album. It was all but confirmed that after four long years, Frank Ocean was finally dropping a new project, and soon. But just when everyone's hopes were up, just as anticipation from fans was at an all-time high, Tragedy struck on August 2nd, 2020. Frank Ocean's younger brother, who was only 18 years old at the time, tragically passed away from a blunt force head injury in a single vehicle collision. This devastation caused Frank to cancel his album, and with the cancellation of Coachella in 2020 due to COVID, Frank Ocean would go radio silent when it came to releasing music. After two years of silence in 2020, Frank Ocean re-released his blonde vinyls, this time with a message in the form of a bittersweet story printed on a poster for his fans. With the last line of the story reading, the recording artist has since changed his mind about the singles model and is again interested in more durational bodies of work. While the confirmation of the single model theory was gratifying, it was equally as sobering to realize that the body of work he created wouldn't see the day of light. And when you think about it, from Frank's perspective as an authentic artist, it makes sense. The person Frank Ocean was two years ago before his brother passing is likely not the person he was in 2022. There were likely perspective shifts, realizations through grief and ultimately growth that Frank had to go through in those two years. Being an artist whose career was built on authentic experiences and perspective, it's likely Frank simply didn't associate himself with the music he made at that time, or perhaps it might have even been too painful to revisit it. Regardless of the reason, it was clear Frank distanced himself from that project and moved on to other creative endeavors. As a consumer of art and artist myself, a hard pill to swallow was the realization that Patience in artistic creation is essential, and unfortunately, patience serves as the backbone of the creative process. Bad luck to talk on these rides. Mine on the as pretentious and cliche as it might sound, art can't be rushed. Creating art is often a process of exploration. It's something that you have to be intentionally present for, cautiously watching as the results unfold over time. Whether it's a stroke of a brush, note in a composition, or a word in a story, each brush stroke, music note, and word written builds towards a final piece at painfully slow speeds at times. And they build without the promise of matching the artist's vision. And Frank Ocean is is no exception to that. So that brings us to 2023, where Frank finally returned to Coachella to headline after three years of the festival being shut down. In the months leading up to the show, suspense began to bubble again of a new Frank Ocean project, with talks of the iconic orange BMW M3 being spotted around and theories going around on the internet. But the only way confirmation for a new album would be realized was by waiting to see what Frank would say during his set. So thousands of people from around the world booked tickets to California, tens of thousands more, including including myself, watched the performance through the many people at Coachella live streaming it. And after showing up an hour late, Frank Ocean had a message he gave to the crowd at Coachella saying, I want to talk about why I'm here because it's not because of a new album. It's because, not that there's not a new album, it's like, I'm, 
After confirming that there is music being made for a new album, Frank decided to take the night to give a tribute to his late brother, which was nice and it touched the hearts of most of the fans. But that feeling quickly turned to distaste when Frank cut the show early, announcing, you Guys, I'm being told it's curfew, so that's the end of the show. Thank you so much. Over the next few months, Frank Ocean was generally quiet about music besides posting a couple clips of music he's been working on through his Instagram story. But from then to the time of recording this now in June of 2024, there's virtually been no news about a return. So I guess that takes us back to the original question. Where the fuck is Frank Ocean? Well, he's right where he should be. It's important to remind ourselves that if we want to be consumers of good art and music, we're waiting for not just new music, but for the depth and sincerity that comes packaged inside of it. We wait for the conclusions and the epiphanies that follow after weeks, months, and often years worth of challenges, mistakes, and life experiences. Frank Ocean made Blonde in his late 20s at 29 after reflecting on his relationships he had as a teenager a decade prior. Kendrick Lamar made Good Kid Mad City after 25 years of reflection on his upbringing. I know I said it before, but it is a hard pill to swallow. Art can't be rushed. If we say we like artists like Frank Ocean because of their authenticity, honesty, and value of artistic integrity, unfortunately, the price to pay to consume that kind of art is waiting for at times painfully long periods in between projects. But there is a bright side. The bright side is, just like Frank Ocean, we all have our own stories, our own failures, our own triumphs, and our own epiphanies. As human beings, it's our birthright to create. And who knows, maybe if you do tell that story, maybe if you do pick up that guitar, or if you do paint that picture, you could impact somebody the way you've been impacted by your favorite art. So the question isn't where the fuck is Frank Ocean? No, the question is, where the fuck are you? Because the world is waiting for your story.